Welcome to Navy Paints. In this video, I'll be showing you how I did the freehand on my Slanish banner. During this tutorial, I go back and forward between a lot of the steps. The reason for this, I had no plan before I started painting what I was doing. And as I added colors, other colors were dark, and so I had to lighten those back up and vice versa. If you wanted to make your job a lot easier, you can just follow one color, say the purple for example, and just follow that one color all the way through to the end. With that, let's crack in. This first color here is Abaddon Black from Citadel. I've mixed a little water into the paint just to thin it out a bit. And I'm just slowly mapping out the design of the banner with this color. I'm not too worried about making mistakes here, as I can always fix those up later. This is just to give me a rough idea on the size and the shape of the design. Once I've got the base outline done, I just fill that in with the Abaddon Black. This next paint is Necromancer Cloak from the Army Painter. This is to fill in the circle and I required two coats with a little water mixed into the paint. Whenever you apply multiple coats of a colour, always let the previous coat dry fully before applying the next. Now with Uniform Grey from the Army Painter, I just roughly sketched the outline of the helmet in the centre of the circle. As always, not worrying about it being too perfect, as I can always fix this up later. Using Blue Violet from the Army Painter, I'm just quickly sketching out the shape of the tongue and also filling in the background behind the helmet. Using plate mail metal from the Army Painter, this has got no water mixed into the paint, I fill in the helmet with this colour and begin tightening up the shape of the helmet. Using the Abaddon Black from Citadel, I just paint in a couple of eye slits on the helmet. Using Caraberg Crimson from Citadel, I apply a little bit of this wash to my brush. With this colour, I apply to the purple areas and this will stain those nicely. With Blue Violet from the Army Painter, I just paint the outlines of the tongue and also place down a few basic details of the tongue. Also to note, any step I apply to the tongue, I also apply this step to the purple of the background. Using a 90 to 10 mix of the blue violet and squid pink from Vallejo, I'm just following the lines I mapped out in the previous step. For this step, I'm painting a little bit less of the area, leaving some of the blue violet visible. The main areas of focus have got to be the bends and the split in the tongue, so I start to lighten these up. To shape the helmet with some shading, as at the moment it's just flat, I've gone back to the plate mail metal and I've mixed in a little bit of Abaddon Black from Citadel. And to know where to put the recesses and shades, I've just looked at the actual helmet the guy's wearing and tried to copy it. This is a lot of trial and error. I wasn't really sure what I was doing here. Just going back and forward between the flat plate mail metal and the shades until I had the right shape. Once I was happy with the rough shape of the helmet, I just continued to add some Abaddon Black to the paint and slowly build up the recesses with the darker mixes. For the tongue in the background, I go back to my mix of blue violet and squid pink. Again, just adding a tiny bit more squid pink into the paint. And I just follow those same areas of interest I painted earlier. Every time I add a new highlight, I just paint a little bit less of those areas. Here I'm just adding a bit more squid pink to the mix. For 
For the teeth, I've gone to white scar from Citadel. I've mixed a little water into the paint, and I've painted in a couple of sharp teeth, applying these with about three to four coats. And with those teeth in, he's no longer Gummy Joe. Back to the tongue and background again. Like I said earlier, when you add colors, it does darken or lighten up other colors. With the teeth added in, I don't know, it just darkened up the tongue again. I've added some more squid pink to the blue violet and further lightening up the tongue in the background. And I continue to add more pink lightening up the purple for the next three steps. This step here is just pure squid pink from Vallejo. After applying this step, I thought the tongue and the background was completed, and yet again I was mistaken, so I continued to add further steps later on. Now to tidy up the shape of the banner, I've gone back to my cobalt skin that I used as a base coat. You may have used a different color, so just go with that one. And with this color, all I'm doing is just fixing up any mistakes where I might have gone over the edges, something might not be sharp enough, or a shape might not be correct. With this step, you want your paint to be a little bit more watery, as you want to apply thin coats of the paint. After applying the touch-ups around the banner, this is what I'm left with. Going back to the shining silver from the Army Painter, I carefully apply this colour to the outline of the helmet. Applying the shining silver like this will break up the background and the helmet. To lighten up the eyes, I've had to go with two colours. The first is Necromancer Cloak, and the second is Uniform Grey. Applying the Necromancer Cloak first, I cover about 80% of the eye socket, leaving some of the black showing. Following that is a Uniform Grey, same thing, leaving some of the Necromancer Cloak underneath. With that applied, I need to tidy up the eyeballs here. So I've gone over to Abaddon Black again from Citadel, and just carefully painted a little thin line, separating the eyeballs and the helmet. Back to the tongue and background again, I've made myself a mix of 90 to 10 squid pink from Vallejo and centaur skin from the army painter. Again just building up the highlights I laid down earlier. This next step is an 80-20 of the squid pink and centaur skin. And the final step for painting the tongue and background is a 70-30 mix of the squid pink and centaur skin. Using Retributor Armor from Citadel, I paint a golden border around all the black areas of the banner, painting this colour on slowly and as neatly as possible as to avoid getting it on the other colours and I just slowly work my way around the banner, applying the gold until it's finished. To fix up the skin on the banner, in the areas that I touched up earlier, I apply an 80-20 mix of Agrax Earthshade from Citadel and water to these areas. To finish off the eyes, I'm going to add a glow effect there. This is done with Tesseract Glow from Citadel. I've made a 50-50 mix of this paint and some water. I've applied three coats of this mix to the banner. Between each application of this paint, you must make sure it fully dries before applying a further coat. Using a banner black from Citadel, I'm just going around and fixing any mistakes I might have made with the gold. And any lines that might be too thick, just thinning those down a bit. And here's the banner after I've fixed up all the gold areas. This last step here is totally optional. You can leave the black the way it is, it looks perfectly fine. But I just wasn't happy with it, I think it just needed that extra colour. So I've shaded it with a grey. 
The two greys I've gone with are Necromancer Cloak and Uniform Grey, both from the Army Painter. The first application was done with Necromancer Cloak, just quickly mapping out where the uh, lighting will be. Again, this is not perfect, it's more just what looks cooler than actually how light would work. I've added a little bit of Uniform Grey to the paint. I've done this over 15 steps, so each step just adding a little bit more Uniform Grey to the paint, lightening it up as I go along, and just painting a little bit less of each area as I go around. You can stop at any time you like, and if you really want, you can keep going further all the way up to white. This final step here is a battle black again, and I'm just touching up the grey areas. And with that, the freehand banner is finally completed. Thanks for watching Napier Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button and leave me a like. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya!